today you drove around, right? Yeah, Some yeah. Tampa. Went to check on the mm. boat tied up at uh, the floating dock there at uh, Lowry Park. So I, I had the chance to uh, visit some of the coastal areas along the Hillsborough River. Um, I uh, drove up Bayshore Boulevard. Uh, you know, Megan, it's it's quiet out there this morning. There's uh, there's light traffic. I think p- people have really taken this storm seriously. They're starting to hunker down. Uh, I did see a number of joggers on Bayshore Boulevard. <laughs> not, not as not as many as there normally are, but uh, uh, two at least who were uh, running through the puddles out there on Bayshore Boulevard. Um, uh, it, you, know, you know, the thing that concerns me still, uh, that remains a concern is the trash, the debris that is piled up along the Hillsborough mm-hmm. River. Um, it, it appears to me the city just wasn't able to get to some of that stuff, but there's still big piles of trash. And you got to wonder what that's going to do in 125 mile per hour winds, uh, predicted to come here. Uh, a reminder that, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if you can, uh, stay, stay inside, goodness gracious, I would hate to be hit by a flying sofa or futon uh, while I was out there walking. Again, we're expected to, uh, you know, really get the heavy winds starting uh, as the sun goes down into later tonight. Um, uh, it's hard for my brain to even wrap around. It really mm. is, yeah. Honestly, yeah. you know, and I, I was born in St. Pete. I mean, we are here through Me too. Andrew. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yes. Just, I've, yeah. Yes, I, I take just, it seriously. Absolutely. I remember Andrew. And actually, you know, Ben, it's interesting that you talk about the, you know, yeah, like the the debris, uh, just because I have a lot of family and friends who unfortunately during Helene, they got flooded. And yeah. thankfully they had second floors they could all shelter in place in at the time. But yeah, their entire, you know, first floors are gutted, like from the drywall to the couches to personal items, like it's all on their front lawns, right? And it already right. looks like a tornado went through their neighborhoods. Now, that's immediately, like the moment that I heard about Milton, that's immediately what me and my family and friends were talking about. We were like, what about all the debris? Like, you know, it could be projectiles. Like it could be, you know, whether it's, I guess, floating and banging into homes or whether it's, you know, flying in the air because of the wind. I mean, I know that, you know, there there's, you know, people in our city who are trying their very best to try to like pick up as much as they possibly can. Um, but, you know, it's just, yeah, it's scary stuff. It's yeah, really scary the, stuff. The city of Tampa, uh, of course, uh, uh, was out there picking trash up. I actually saw some trash trucks this morning uh, going around. Um, uh, what you know, the city says what they didn't have time to collect for was was made up by interdepartmental teamwork and committed uh, commitment displayed by the many solid waste workers and staff from other departments. Uh, but but be be warned, people, they did not get everything. Uh, there is they're done, uh, of course, uh, picking up and collecting trash. Uh, but they they weren't able to uh, to get everything. I saw piles head high by the Hillsborough River. Oh, uh, yes. uh, keep keep that in mind, uh, you know, as you're moving about today, if you are. And also, just so you know, if you are moving out, uh, I just got a press release from officials in the state of Florida. So the Florida Department of Transportation, the Highway Patrol, Tampa, Clearwater, they are already announcing that they are going to close the bridges this afternoon Mm. um, once winds start to get to that tropical storm level. So the Sunshine Skyway will close when the sustained winds exceed 45 miles per hour. They're saying that once it's closed, that's it. You, you're you not going to go over it. You're not going to get out. Same with the Howard Franklin, the Gandhi Bridge, and the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Once those are closed, they're closed. For so sure. if, you, sure. if you need to leave, you need to do it now. Yeah. Wow. I mean, right time is just so of the essence right now. And those Truly. winds those winds are on their way here, folks. Uh, if you're still out on the barrier islands, uh, you know, don't get stuck out there is all I'm saying. Uh, mm. We saw during Helene, uh, you know, I talked to folks out there who said four feet of storm surge washed in. Uh, they decided to stay for that one. I think this is different. Uh, this feels a lot different. It feels like a lot of people got out. Maybe Helene shook us out of our apathy. Uh, gave us the warning that we need to take this storm seriously. You know, I I definitely hope so. And this morning, Pinellas County Emergency Management held a briefing. Uh, I want to share that with you here. Kathy Perkins, who's the director of that, had quite a bit about quite a bit to say about what you can expect if you chose to shelter in place along the uh, barrier islands.
Barbara Hernandez, Communications Director for Pinellas County Government, and we will be sharing some final updates as we prepare for the impacts of Hurricane Milton. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Perkins, our Emergency Management Director. Good morning. This is it, folks. Hurricane Milton is now expected to make landfall near the mouth of Tampa Bay as a Category 4 hurricane. I'm going to describe a very grim forecast for our area. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I want you to be prepared. There is still plenty of space at our public shelters and we're opening three more this morning. Palm Harbor Middle School in North County, New Heights Elementary School and Fairmount Park Elementary School, both in St. Petersburg. We have about 8,000 people currently in shelter and we have capacity for up to 20,000. So please, I implore you, if you live in zones A, B, or C, or in a mobile home, and you don't have friends or family, you don't have any other place to go, these shelters are free. They're pet friendly. You can bring your pets with you. We also have the special needs shelters. So please, if you need those shelters, get to one of them before noon today. We expect the tropical storm force winds to start mid-afternoon and it'll keep picking up hour after hour. If you're not out by then, you will be on your own. You'll start to see major bridges closing. Some of you driving on I-275 today saw the alert sign saying the Howard Franklin and the Skyway Bridge will close this afternoon. So we just checked with the Florida Department of Transportation. Right now, the roads leading out of Pinellas and even into Hillsborough are open. So for those of you that still want to get out of county, you have that option. But that window is closing. I cannot stress enough to you that your options are quickly diminishing for what you can do to get out of harm's way. By dusk, you can expect that all the bridges off the peninsula will be closed due to dangerous winds and starting to see really choppy conditions and storm surge. The brunt of this storm is gonna come overnight. And it's gonna be scary, right? It's gonna be loud when it comes over us. It's gonna be very windy. So I need everybody to be thinking about if where you are outside of the evacuation zone, the place that you're staying in your home, think about having a safe space within your home, an interior room, an interior closet where you can go if things start to get really, really bad. So what else can you expect with a category four at landfall? You heard me talk about yesterday, the last storm that hit us was over a hundred years ago. And we were a lot less populated, had a lot less infrastructure than we do now. It was likely a category three. So I don't think any of us here in Pinellas County truly know what a category four has in store for us. We can expect 130 mile per hour winds are stronger. We can also expect that wall of storm surge to come up the bay and across our coast. The wall of water could be anywhere from 9 to 13 feet on our beaches and up to 15 feet in our bayfront areas. And that's just zone A. So for those of you that were punched by Hurricane Helene, this is going to be a knockout. At that level, you're not just talking about the threat of drowning. We're talking about buildings, homes being wiped off of their foundations. That is unsurvivable. So I'm, ta I'm begging you, if, especially if you are in an A zone, you need to get out and you need to get out now. You'll start to see the water increasingly rise as the hours go by, sometimes as much as a foot, an hour, maybe even faster. And then we'll start to see water getting pushed into our B and our C zones. And for many of those folks, they've never experienced that. We haven't had that here. Please, I don't want you to find out what it feels like to be stuck in your home in the dark and have water rushing in. Knowing that you may not even be able to get a dial tone on your phone, you may not even to be able to call 911, 
And even if you get 911, they may not even be able to send someone out to you. You will truly be on your own. And I cannot think of a more terrifying situation to be in than to be in the dark, in a house, with water rapidly rising and the winds whipping around. For those of you that are further inland, and we are expecting some very heavy rainfalls in our area, I would say if water starts to enter your home, if possible, turn off the breakers to reduce the chances of fire within your structure. If you're in a mobile home, the level of sustained winds that we are going to see here overnight will send a field of flying debris through the air. We can see trees crashing down into your mobile homes. We've seen many situations with lesser winds where the carports have been pulled off of the mobile home and then it peels off the roof of the rest of the mobile home. That is not where you want to be for this storm. We have heard that most of our mobile home parks have evacuated, but if you're stubbornly hanging out thinking it's not going to be that bad, I survived the last one, I'm going to be fine in this one, my message to you is that you are not safe and you need to get out now. So let's talk about the rain. So for those of you that were in our inland areas and experienced Debbie, we had some very heavy rains up to about 16 inches in some areas of our county and we had severe flooding. Many of us in, in the southern portion of the county on early September, we had a fluke rainfall in the middle of the afternoon that caused extensive flooding in roadways. And I'm telling you what we're expecting with this storm is gonna be much worse than both of those. Again, that was a slap. This is gonna be a punch to the face. With five to 12 inches of rain expected and isolated amounts up to 18 inches, our very vulnerable low-lying areas will flood and roads will become impassable. Not only for you, but also for all first responders. There will come a point when first responders get pulled off of the road, whether it's for flooding, for storm surge, or winds. If you decide not to leave now, you're gonna be stuck at home or what's left of your home for days. The storm surge will push up creeks and into lakes, which then will not allow the rainfall to drain off. So this will cause flooding to communities around our water bodies, including those adjacent to Lake Tarpon and Lake Seminole. No matter where you are, even if you're in a sturdy building outside the evacuation zone, you will experience the power of this storm. I would encourage you, you have some time this morning, so it, if you, think you're going to flood at all, if you can, move your vehicle to higher ground. And I cannot say enough about the electric vehicles. Anything with those lithium ion batteries needs to be moved out of the surge zones where it could be exposed to salt water. We've seen it. They've exploded. They've caused fires. If it's inside of your home or underneath a condo, uh, we, we do not need to have building fires in the middle of this because nobody's going to be able to come out and help you. So there are shelters available, and I wanna make sure that everybody knows we have 13 shelters available and we still have space. I'll tell you that Leelman Innovation is filling up. Um, so if you can go to another one, um, we'll be marking that one as full on our website. And you'll start to see that throughout the day uh, as our shelters fill. So please make a plan to get to those shelters. They're, they have uh, food and water there. Um, and the lights will stay on hopefully as long as possible. But this is still a much better option than staying in zones A, B, or C or in a mobile home. Every one of our shelters is listed on our website at disaster.pinellas.gov or you can call our County Information Center for shelter information at 727-464-4333. So I know there's still maybe some people out there that do not have cars and they rely on public transportation. We've been getting a lot of calls from people this morning who unfortunately had not already heeded the warnings um, and now are panicking. I would highly recommend um, if you can try to get an Uber or a Lyft. Uh, if you are a family member outside of the area and you have a loved one in one of our evacuation zones that has not moved, 
schedule a lift for them. I know we've got some stubborn people here in this county, but we got to get everybody out of harm's way. Just know that as the storm gets closer, transportation resources are going to diminish as well. We have to pull the buses off the road. We need to get the drivers to safety. Um, so there is um, transportation available. We've got that listed on our website. The state is running charter buses from different locations uh, throughout the county, and they will take you to shelters. Uh, we have the list there up on the screen, but note that they are only running through about 11 a.m. this morning. So time is ticking. You've heard me say this. Time is the one resource that you cannot get more of. You are running out of time to get out of harm's way. If you're leaving last minute, you want to bring some critical things with you. So, and I want to stress shelters are a lifeboat. They're not a cruise ship. I'm not going to lie to you. They're not going to be comfortable. They're going to be crowded. You're going to be sitting on the floor next to people you don't know. And hopefully everybody's be being as kind as they can and you're making fast friends and you're all working together. So as you're packing your bags, keep it simple. All right, this is not a place to bring all of your belongings. Bring your medication, your bedding, your basic toiletries. You can easily gather them together, get your vital documents, and make your way to the shelters now. If you are going to be leaving an evacuation zone that's expected to flood, highly recommend you turn your power off before you leave. We've seen it before. Homes, once they get water above their electrical outlets, or sometimes as the power is being restored, and there's been water in the outlets, uh, we have ended up with house fires. Again, pet friendly shelters, special needs shelters, general population shelters, all free of charge. We will welcome you in. I gotta say, we're all exhausted, right? So we've just been doing back-to-back -back storms. We've had a lot of losses, but our goal now is to reduce the loss of life. Get yourself out of harm's way now. And if not for you, if for the many first responders who've probably said goodbye to their families yesterday or this morning and are now faced with very long days and long hours, we don't wanna be plucking people out of the water. And, and you're gonna see acts of heroism today, but please don't put the first responders in that position. It's been very difficult. And I just wanna thank everybody that's been working around the clock from the city, the state, all of our county departments, everybody here at our emergency operations center, all of us packed up our homes, secured them as much as we could. Some of us, some people sent their families far away. Some of our families are sheltering in place here locally. Um, you know, Godspeed to all of us that are in the path of this storm. Please, please get yourself out of harm's way now. Thank you, Kathy. We will now go ahead and take questions from media in the room. Roger Shulman, Salem Media, Tampa. Go ahead, Roger. I uh, talked to a man in Zone A who thinks he can seal his house up and survive the storm. There seem to be a lot of people who think they can do that. Your thoughts on that? This is unsurvivable. You're, you're not going to be able to stop it. So that's not going to work. Get out. Get out. And Roger, one thing I want to add, um, with Helene, I had an opportunity to go upstairs and join some of our 911 uh, operators uh, the night of the storm and hear some of the calls that they were getting. And they were desperate pleas from people who said, I made a stupid decision. I thought I could weather the storm. Water is rising. I'm on top of my counter. Please send somebody to help me. And at that point, we couldn't send anybody out there because the conditions had worsened so badly. And so if people are thinking that um, somehow they have a special protection, somehow they're gonna be okay because they've been okay in the past, they have not seen the storm that we're gonna see. And so we just remind everybody to please take this seriously because first responders will do the best they can, but it is harrowing to be on the other end of that phone call and know that nothing can be done because the storm is already in our town. Thank you. We'll go ahead and take questions from uh, media who's joining us via Zoom. If you have a question, raise your hand. We will unmute you and you can ask your question. 
We have a question from Mark Parker with the St. Pete Catalyst. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry, there we go. Um, it's really, really hard listening to all this. Um, and, and again, thanks for what you guys do. Is is there anything, any, any of the baubles to the south, does any of that provide you guys with any kind of hope or silver linings as far as impacts? No, because it's a wobble. Whoa. So wobbles to the south, equally wobble to the north. We are not far, right? So I've been I've been watching the wind probabilities between Venice and Tampa, and we've been like racehorses. We've been neck and neck, right? I'll tell you, I started my career after Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew was forecast to come in at the Miami-Dade Broward line. It came in 30 miles south of that into Homestead. 30 mile wobble back up to the north is gonna make a world of difference, right? Between what we see. So do not put your faith in a wobble, right? At this point in time, everybody in Tampa Bay should consider that we are going to be ground zero and you need to take action. You need to move out of zones A, B, C, and out of those mobile homes, get into safe locations as soon as possible. No other questions on Zoom. Thanks, everybody. And that was Pinellas County Emergency Management Director Kathy Perkins and Barbara Hernandez, the Communications Director in Pinellas, giving some updates this morning on what people in the county, especially zones A, B, and C, can expect from Milton. I'm WMNF's Assistant News Director Megan Bowman, sitting in for Duncan Strauss in Talking Animals. I'm joined today by Sam Vall and Hello. Ben Montgomery. Hi. Glad to glad to be here, uh, folks. You heard it uh, right there. Uh, strong language from Pinellas County Emergency Services personnel. Uh, just to remind you, uh, remind you, uh, the late the latest update uh, from NOAA uh, has uh, has some stern warnings as well. A large area of destructive storm surge with the highest inund- inundations of ten feet or greater is expected along the portion of west central coast of Florida Peninsula. If you're in the storm surge warning area, people now is the time to get out, seek higher ground. This is an extremely life-threatening situation. Devastating hurricane force winds are expected uh, in that same region, our region, where where the hurricane warning is in effect. Milton is forecast to remain a hurricane while it crosses the peninsula, which means that folks in Polk County, folks in interior Florida, uh, folks in our entire listening area need to be on high alert right now and be making smart and safe decisions Heavy rainfall is also expected uh, across that same stretch of land, the Florida Peninsula, through Thursday, and it brings a risk of catastrophic and light-threatening flash and urban flooding along with moderate to major river flooding. If you're along the rivers, uh, be warned. Uh, Now is the time to seek higher ground, especially in areas where coastal and inland flooding combine to increase the overall flood threat. Wow. Wow. I also just want to add, too, that... um, for the past couple days, WMNF, we have been offering crank radios to people and, and those in need. Um, however, I just want to emphasize that, yeah, now is not the time anymore. One, we ran out of crank radios, so I'm glad that we were able to give out all the radios that we had to people that were in need. But also, yeah, now, if you're asking yourself, oh, maybe I should run towards uh, WMNF and come down to the station and pick up a crank radio, unfortunately, yeah, that's off the table. Uh, you know, Do what, what Ben just said, please just be as safe as you possibly can. Make smart decisions. You know, and and emergency officials are also warning folks, if you do come into contact with flood water, to remember that it's it's not safe. Skin contact with floodwaters does not by itself pose a serious health risk, but health hazards are a concern when those waters become contaminated Ugh, with bacteria. Yeah. The water, you're not when it comes up this quick, this fast, there's gonna be wave action, you're not gonna you're not gonna know what's inside of it. Yeah, you don't know what's in that water. That's that's important to remember. Uh, uh so, you know, those those folks out jogging on Bayshore this morning. Uh, appeared to me to be doing so safely, but uh, we we don't know what's coming towards us. You know what I mean? Uh, especially with all the debris sucked out of all the coastal regions, uh, that stuff is floating around. If you're uh, if you're out there, uh, uh, be warned. Do you, there's no telling what that uh, what that water contains. 
I mean, yeah, some nasty stuff. And especially if you have cuts, if you have sores, any openings, you know, just make sure. And also any flood water that comes in contact with any food or anything like that should immediately be be discarded. 100%. Like, especially when Helene was coming through. Again, I had family and friends who experienced flooding on their first floors. And yeah, like, for example, uh, one of my best friends, Rebecca, she is about my age. We're around and like, oh, we just turned uh, 30. And this is her first, you know, time that she's kind of owned a home. And so she's like, what do I do? What do I do? So, you know, she's calling my parents saying like, hey, so uh, what should I do? And yeah, my parents literally were like saying, yeah, if if the water touched your fridge, if the water touched uh, your couches and your rugs, if the water touched really anything, we wouldn't trust it. Like we would put it out on our driveways and replace it, replace it. It's it's safer to, I mean, unfortunately, right. It's, it's costly, but it's better to protect yourself and your health rather than like say, eh, you know, and to kind of For risk sure. like whatever it might be in the water. Yeah. yeah. In the span of those two weeks between Helene and now the city of Tampa has collected more than 26,000 cub- uh, cubic tons of debris. I have no idea how much that is, but it sounds like a lot. <laughs> 26,000 cubic tons of debris, but there's still a lot out there. Like I saw this morning driving around the Hillsborough River, there's still a lot of debris piled along the curbs. That stuff in 126 mile per hour, 125 mile per hour wind is going to is going to become like Sean mentioned earlier on uh, Democracy Now. It's going to become battering rams on doors and windows. It's going to become uh, deadly projectiles in the mm. air. Uh, Make sure you're not and, in your car either. And that time no. is upon us. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, if you have uh, uh, concerns about your car, just a reminder: the city of Tampa uh, has opened public parking garages. There is no fee to park there. Uh, they say that the Ybor City garages are still relatively empty. Uh, so you can access those sites, get your car on higher ground, uh, drive up the ramps, uh, especially, folks, if you're driving electric vehicles. And thank goodness uh, we've got electric vehicles out there now. It's a great uh, people thing. are conscious of uh, right. you know our carbon emissions and making smart decisions to buy Teslas and, and Rivians and so forth. Uh, those things have been known to catch fire during floods. I saw a few of them walking in Paso Grill last week. Uh, they were just burned out hulks of vehicles. Uh, you could tell they had been left behind. The water had risen and they set on fire. In addition to that, the city of Tampa says fire department officials responded to at least two house fires that were caused by electric vehicle batteries that wow. came in contact with the flood water. Now that means if your Tesla is sitting in your garage and especially if you're in one of those flood zones, uh, evacuation uh, flood zones A and B, do not, folks, leave those cars in your garages. The electric batteries can catch fire. The city of Tampa is encouraging you to park in city-owned public parking garages. And they're around there, a couple in Ybor City off 15th Street, one uh, closer to uh, Nebraska Avenue. Uh, find higher ground for those vehicles. Yeah, Very especially important. especially while you have time move those while you still can. I uh, want to give an update. Pinellas County has reached capacity at three of their emergency shelters, mm. Largo High School, Leelman Innovation Academy, and Palm Harbor University Building 19. That's a special needs shelter. There are still, though, 11 shelters that are accepting residents. So, if you need to go out there and you need to find a place to shelter, you can still do that. Uh, go to disaster.pinellas.gov and uh, slash shelters, and you can find more information on what's open, what's closed, and help help keep you safe out there. Yeah, you know, don't risk, honestly, yeah, like don't risk it. I mean, and actually that's really great to know, Megan, because, you know, when you said, yeah, the three shelters are full, I was like, oh, I mean, is I don't know if there's, is there more? Turns out, yes, there is plenty more where you can go and you can shelter. Um, and yeah, and just, wow, it's just, it's just wild. Yeah, be safe. And it be never safe. hurts to uh, continue to remind people who have decided to stick this thing out and to write it out in place. Maybe you're not in one of those evacuation zones. Uh, uh, folks, when the power goes out, and it most likely will, uh, just a reminder, don't run those generators indoor. They have uh, toxic exhaust fumes that can kill you. Uh, That is carbon monoxide. Those things are producing gas-powered generators. Uh, And it's been known. I've seen this uh, almost every storm we have. Somebody makes this mistake of thinking that they should power up their house by running the generator, and they do so indoors, and the carbon monoxide comes in and takes them out. And we don't want to see that. We don't don't want our neighbors to pass. Speaking of neighbors... Mm. Um, last minute 
you know, checks on, on, on neighbors don't hurt, especially if, if folks, we, we're in this thing together. If you have uh, uh, elderly neighbors, maybe you've never met them before, uh, uh, you know, our fear is increasing, right? And 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 as we know, uh, uh, there are a lot of Floridians who are uh, uh, who are who are packing heat. Uh, mm. So don't put yourself in harm's way, but uh, but look after your friends and neighbors. Now is the time. Encourage them to make safe decisions. Uh, uh, we're running out of time to see if we can lend one another hands, but um, but but here's your chance. Uh, it might it might it might be worthwhile knocking on the doors, especially if you see if you see people out there who are struggling. And and let me just add on to what Ben just said because if you have issues with transportation, say you need to get a shelter, but you can't, you just you don't have that much longer. Just on 30 minutes uh, that you can access free evacuation transportation uh, through you know our five counties right here. Her Fernando, uh, Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Manatee. So that's about 30 minutes. And, you know, you can still get to a shelter. The bridges are open at this point. And when did, uh, remind me when they said they would be close, oh, when the when the winds reach uh, 45, 40, miles, 45 per hour. miles per hour. I've mm. also been checking some of the uh, power outages. There actually already are some. Oh, would you really? Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure some of those are outstanding um but right now do like from helene sure um sure. But right now duke energy showing about a thousand in the tampa bay area about 700 in um from tico and uh yeah so just stay safe out there you know they they've said multiple times um officials have said you know to expect widespread power outages so charge your stuff now while you yeah. still have power especially your phones. So that way, if you do need to call somebody, you know, and if you are sheltering in place, make sure you call your friends, your family, let them know where you are Mm -hmm. and that you're staying there just so that, you know, we can all help, help keep each other safe. Connection, you know, uh, and and communication, yeah, super key, super key. And actually, if you are listening right now and you want to let us know how you are doing and what's going on, feel free to email DJ at WMF dot org. Uh, Wendy in Seminole uh, wrote in and just said, you know, first of all, thank you all so much for being here and keeping the information coming. She says, I am located in Seminole, just a mile from the Barrier Island. We are sixty above sea level, so that's a plus. But I'm not going to lie. I'm a little worried about the wind. I'm going to keep praying um, and, yeah, see how this goes. Wendy, wow. Yeah, thank you so much for writing in. Um, be safe. Be careful out there. I mean, you know, and I hear you that you're saying you're 60 above sea level, but also you are right near a barrier island. So just stay safe. And stay this safe. isn't just a a storm surge issue, right? The, we're going to have high winds so be prepared for that. Like Ben said earlier, all that debris that's out there, it's it's there's going to come a certain point today where it's just not going to be safe anymore to be outside. Yeah. If you're in the listening area, by the way, just a quick reminder that uh, there are still shelters open. Uh, if you'll remind me, uh, if you guys hear one that's already been closed in Pinellas County, I'm reading them off right now. Campbell Park Elementary is for the general population. Largo High School, Gibbs High School, Palm Harbor University High School, Palm, Palm Harbor University High School Building 19 is for special needs residents. I'm sorry, that's closed. That's been closed. I'm getting warned. Uh, Dunedin Highland Middle School. Uh, also for our friends and neighbors with special needs, that's at 70 Patricia Avenue in Dunedin. Uh, Oak Grove Middle School uh, is also for uh, folks with special needs, and that's at 1370 South Belcher Road, running through Hillsborough County's uh, emergency shelters that were open as of 2.30 p.m. Monday, with the exception of Middleton High School. Burnett Middle School uh, uh, is a shelter. Durant High, Irwin Technical College, Middleton High School, Pizzo Elementary School, Shields Middle School, Sickles High School, Sumner High School, Strawberry Crest High School, and in Pasco County, a few here to mention, Centennial Middle School, 5A High School, Wesley Chapel High School, River Ridge Middle and High Schools, and Fasano Regional Hurricane Center, which is special needs only and 
pet friendly. That's at 11611 Denton Avenue in Hudson. Folks, check uh, the web uh, while you still have power. Uh, if you're thinking about evacuating to these uh, places, check the web, uh, uh, give a phone call just to make sure that they're still open. We don't want to give you bad information here, so double check us. Uh, but those were open as of uh, yesterday evening. Yes, Pinellas County just said actually Largo High School is closed. Largo is closed. Largo is closed. They have reached their capacity, um, but otherwise shelters are open if you need to get there. You know, driving around again, anecdotally, but driving around uh, a little bit around Tampa early this morning as the sun came up, I saw a lot of uh, our presumably unhoused uh, friends and neighbors who are out there still Mm. uh, seeking shelter under bridges, seeking shelter in, uh, you you know, in front of gas stations, things like that. Um, uh, I I wish there was something more that I had to offer those people. It just uh, tugs on the heartstrings to see uh, some of our folks who have, uh, you know, who have chosen to, uh, well, maybe it's not a decision they, they have. I'm stumbling over my words here, but uh, folks who are still out there who, who uh, again, presumably are unhoused, um, you know, is, is a concern for us all. I hope those folks are safe because the winds are coming and the water will rise. And if you're just wow. joining us, my name is Megan Bowman. I'm here with Sam Fall and Ben Montgomery. We're sitting in for Duncan Strauss uh, and talking animals. We're just giving you hurricane updates because it's coming. And we've been talking a lot about shelters for the past few minutes. I do want to share a story that our reporter Chris Young produced uh, after he visited a shelter yesterday in Hillsborough County. People hauled trash bags and personal items into a shelter at Middleton High School in East Tampa. Evacuee Eugene Van Noski, who's lived in Tampa all his life, is currently experiencing homelessness. I'm worried about my family here in Tampa. So they say that this is going to be a bad hurricane, so I'm worried about that. And I'm just wanting it to be over with so we can get back to normal and try to get housing for ourselves. Hillsborough County Shelter Manager Maria Nelson said about 500 people had arrived as of noon yesterday. Because Helene was just, you know, it was recent. So I think that people are becoming more aware and conscious that they need to evacuate and come somewhere safe. So we're encouraging people to come to the shelters. Some things to keep in mind at the shelter. They will provide meals, but no cots, blankets or supplies will be available. And each resident will have about the same amount of room as a sleeping bag or 20 square feet. Chris Young, WMNF News, Tampa. Now there's also been debris that has not been picked up. Ben, tell me a little bit about what you saw today in Tampa. Yeah, once again, in the two weeks since Hurricane Helene uh, uh, flooded uh, all sorts of low-lying homes around this area, uh, the city of Tampa picked up 26,000 cubic tons of trash. Uh, it seems like a lot of trash to me, but a lot of it was left out there. Uh, the city couldn't get to it. Uh, you, you know, I was looking at uh, driving down streets north of Sly along Hillsborough River, and there was still uh, head-high piles of debris. Um, you got to hope that stuff doesn't turn into floating missiles. Uh, lots of dunnage out there, uh, uh, you know, you know, just, just, uh, it seems to me it will be sucked into the river just as soon as the waters begin to rise. And in, in Charlotte County, mounds of debris from Hurricane Helene still sit in front of many homes and businesses as residents move quickly to do what they can to protect their, their homes. Uh, WGCU Sandra Victorova visited the Inglewood area to see how residents are preparing for Milton. Lorna Babcock and her co-workers secure sandbags in front of the doors of Southern Design Living, a furniture shop in Englewood. Hurricane Ian pushed some water into the business and they're hoping their precautions for Milton this time will be enough. Oh, we were just cleaning up. There's some uh, French doors here and French doors in the back and we're just pulling everything away from the walls that might get some water through them. So okay. depending on the storm surge. Babcock, originally from Colorado, lives in nearby Port Charlotte. Her home is in an orange zone, which is under an evacuation order, but she likely will not leave. I really think we're, we're kind of just kind of ride it out <laughs> at home um, since it did so well in Ian. Down the street in a manufactured home community, everyone we met is on their way out. They're located in a red zone where residents are supposed to take the highest level of precaution and evacuate. I put everything away that I can, and I batten down the stuff that I can't, and then I cross my fingers. 
Phil Durand and his wife from Minnesota say they'll go stay with a friend inland, despite doing okay in Hurricane Helene. The reason we're leaving is just because this is a different direction and this is higher winds and uh, more more Ian type. Their neighbor down the road, Roger Rubel from Ohio, is changing his typical game plan. You stayed for Hurricane Ian. Yes. You stayed for Hurricane Helene. Yes. But this time it's not this one. one. This is eminent. This is coming right at us. So I feel I'm going to go by what they suggest, evacuate. Rubel says his wife has been struggling with anxiety over Milton. It doesn't bother me, it does my wife. <laughs> she gets scared, but that's why I'm going to. I wouldn't mind riding it out right here, but there's no sense being foolish. And so he checks his shutters before he heads out. It's all about preparation, really, and a lot of being blessed. In Inglewood, Sandra Victorova. All right, and we are back, and I want to give you an update. The Skyway Bridge is now closed. That just came in one minute ago from the city of St. Petersburg, and at about 12.06 today, we're going to hear from Ken Welch, the mayor of St. Pete. He's going to give us an update on what the city is experiencing. Ben, uh, tell me a little bit about shelters and what, what it's so important to remember to do when you're going to one. Yeah, well, you know, um, after, uh, so this is interesting. I, I went down uh, to um, the affected areas after Hurricane Ian, uh, uh, which uh, of course was, uh, what was that a couple of years ago, two years ago? Two um, years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I visited a place called um, uh, Mobile Manor, a mobile home park along the Caloosahatchee River. Um, and th this is an area where most of the folks uh, either chose to stay or just didn't have the opportunity uh, to to get out of Dodge. But I met a lot of people who had ridden out the storm with their animals. And interestingly, the animals provided great comfort to these folks. I met a guy named Anthony Lehman, who was a, a big fella. But uh, as soon as Hurricane Ian started to scream up the Caloosahatchee River and to take bites off the roof of his, uh, his mobile home, he sort of turned to his most trusted friend, uh, uh, Rocky, who was a tabby cat mm. uh, that he had raised from kittenhood. Um, he and Rocky jumped in, in Anthony's 2015 Mazda 6 and took off up the road. They sped the Winn-Dixie up on Bayshore uh, Road uh, and, and rode out the storm together. Uh, animals can be a great comfort for us in times of need, but there are some options. Uh, and by the way, I met I met folks all over that mobile home park, um, uh, including a woman who had hung out with her African African gray parrot, whose name hilariously oh. was Mr. Bojangles. Oh, uh, I love that you know. as a tap dancer. That makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Mike Henry had an old mutt named Taz uh, uh, and and Peanut who was Teresa Cloud's mm. three-month-old bull terrier. Um, these folks uh, cared for and loved their animals and they, and they sort of held on to each other during the storm. Uh, as it turns out, there are pet-friendly shelters open uh, for you and your animals. If you're afraid to leave your dogs and cats and you're staying put, uh, especially in these evacuation zones, you're staying put because you have an animal and you think no shelter will uh, let you in, uh, it's not true. Uh, there are shelters out there and we've got these lined up for you. So if you have an animal and you're listening to this, especially, uh, uh, expecting the regularly scheduled programming today, <laughs> we just wanted to mention <laughs> folks who are really interested in animals and pets. Yeah. Cause we're talking animals today. Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah. Literally, yeah. literally and theoretically, whatever. <laughs> yes, so we yeah, are. Palm, what are those shelters? Palm Harbor University High and Gibbs High School, both are still open and they are pet friendly in Pinellas County. Nice. In Hillsborough County, County, you've got Burnett Middle School. Um, you've got nearing capacity is Durant High, but they are still open and pet friendly. Middleton High School. Let's see. Shields Middle School is full. Sickles High School is open. Steinbrenner High School is open. Sumner High School and Strawberry Crest High School, both still open, both accepting pets. So you have options. Nice. We have options, and, and that's just Hillsboro and Pinellas. We've got more on our website, WMNF.org. You can check that out and get a full list of all the shelters if you're able to get online. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, you can always go to WMNF.org too. Um, you know, it's just, this reminds me because yeah, like one of my uh, good friends, what she did because she has not only a husband, but also two corgis, uh, one other dog that was a mixed breed, uh, a bearded dragon and a newt. And all of them, they decided to evacuate to Orlando because they didn't know about the options about uh, shelters. They're, the, they're one of those types of people that um, they live here in Florida, but the, the rest of their family have moved elsewhere. Elsewhere. And so they didn't really have any other place to stay during the storm. So they decided to evacuate early. Um, but, you know, if you did not decide to evacuate, but now you're thinking, mm, maybe, you know, eh, <laughs> maybe we should move. Um, and you have pets. These are great resources. So, so glad to hear about them. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and it's worth reminding people who might have missed this story. But after Helene, a group of manatees swam through uh, Hurricane Helene's floodwaters and somehow wound up trapped in a small pond. Uh, in Largo, uh, w- w- you know, which surprised residents and, and wildlife officials had to come out and made a sweeping rescue attempt to uh, get those manatees out of there. Uh, I just want to remind people that um, the, the FWC has a wildlife alert app, uh, which you can download from Google Play or the App Store, uh, or you can text 847411 with keyword FWC. Uh, you can call the Wildlife Alert hotline at 888-404-FWCC. That's 888-404-3922. So I'm, I'm just getting word. We, we are under a tornado watch. I think one just dropped somewhere off of I-75. We're, so we're being told that a tornado has just dropped in our area off I-75. So wow. if you are out there, please... Please, please be careful. Uh, This whole storm, pretty much the whole southern part of the state right now is under a tornado watch um, from Pinellas, Hillsborough down all the way through Miami. And yes. I, know, I know a thing or two uh, about tornadoes. Having uh, grown up in Oklahoma, my, my granny always tornado said... Tornado Alley. Woo. Yeah, Ooh. Tornado Alley for sure. Uh, uh, it's important. If you're under a tornado warning, continue to listen to local news. Uh, take advice from, uh, from the NOAA weather radio or stay updated about tornadoes, watches, and warnings at your house. If you're inside and there's a tornado warning in effect... Uh, go to your basement, your safe room, or an interior room. You want to stay away from windows, folks. Don't forget your pets if time allows. We always used to hunker down in the bathtub in yes. the interior part of the house. Yes. If you have time, pull a mattress over you. Uh, you never know what kind of debris is going to come flying through your house. If you're at your workplace or somehow uh, out and about, you follow the tornado drills. Go, go to your local tornado shelter if possible. Stay quick. Stay calm. Uh, Stay away from windows. Do not go into large open rooms like cafeterias, gymnasiums, auditoriums. If you're outside and if this tornado dropped down on I-75, you got to figure there are people who are outside or in their cars. Tornadoes can definitely move vehicles. They can toss vehicles over. You see it all the time. Uh, If you're outside, seek shelter inside a sturdy building if one is available as a tornado is approaching. Sheds and storage facilities are not safe. Mm. Uh, uh, Anything that can be blown away is not safe. So seek a, a sturdy building. A mobile home, a tent is not safe. If you have time, get into a safe building. If you're in your vehicle... Being in a vehicle during a tornado is absolutely not safe. The best course of action is to drive to the closest shelter. If you're unable to make it to the safe shelter, and again, this this is advice from Noah, if you're not able to make it to a safe shelter, either get down in your car and cover your head or abandon your car and seek shelter in a low-lying area like a ditch or a ravine. Now, we don't have many ditches or ravines right now that aren't full of water, so that's probably not recommended, but get down as close as you can to the ground where you're protected from flying objects. These are the main concerns during tornadoes. And I just saw a confirmed tornado was caught on camera touching down in southern Florida, just north of Alligator Alley in Collier County. Uh, There's another one in Miami uh, that crossed over I-75. So keep an eye. Keep an eye out there because this storm is coming and it's, it's, 
throwing everything it's got at us. Oh, yeah. No, this is exactly what I told my parents um, who are sheltering in place. I basically said, you know, yeah, like I said, one, yeah, go in the ba- in the bathtub because that is the one place where nothing is going to fall on top of them. Because that's like the one thing I'm thinking is like one, either things that from up above or things that are, you know, you know, coming through the window. There's no windows and there's nothing to fall on top of them. So I'm like, go into the bathtub. Also, I love what Ben said, which I didn't know about personally, which is that, yeah, grab have a mattress and, and, you know, protect yourself in case, you know, debris comes flying in. I mean, this is serious stuff. It's and, serious stuff. And if you're listening to our voices on the radio, you are most likely under tornado watch. Uh, and that includes central Florida counties of Hardy, Polk, in south central Florida, DeSoto, Highlands, in southwest Florida, Charlotte, Lee, in west central Florida, Hillsborough, Manatee, Pinellas and Sarasota, all under tornado watches. This includes the city of Arcadia, Avon Park, Bayshore Gardens, Bonita Springs, Bowling Green, Bradenton, on and on, Cape Coral, Clearwater, Inglewood, Fort Myers, Lakeland, Largo, Lehigh Acres, North Fort Myers, North Port, Palmetto, Placid Lakes, Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, Sarasota, Sebring, South Venice, St. Pete, Tampa, Venice, Wachula, Winter Haven, and Zolfo Springs, all under tornado watches right now. Stay safe out there. Wow. Yeah. This is no joke. It's not just water, and it's a whole lot of wind. It's wind gusts. It's tornadoes. This is nothing to joke with. Uh, At this point, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge is now closed, but if you need to get off of Pinellas and get somewhere else, Howard Franklin is at this moment still, still open. open. Okay. Courtney Campbell, Gandy, I don't know how much longer. Right. It, you know, because like you said, it's 45 miles per hour is when they're going to close it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But usually the Sunshine Skyway is the first to close, but those follow pretty quickly after. So keep an eye on it. Absolutely. We've been telling folks to head to shelters again. You're running out of time. If that's uh, if you've decided to stay in, in your home and you decided the last minute that you need to get to a shelter, there's still shelters open. Uh, Pinellas County advises people who are interested in, in seeking shelter at those places. And if, again, if you have time to collect these things, we, we just wanted to alert you to some basic supplies that you ought to bring with you. Sanitation. Supplies That includes wipes, antibacterial hand gel, soap, toilet paper, hygiene supplies, feminine supplies, diapers, uh, cloth face coverings if you have them. These sometimes wind up being packed, uh, the shelters, and so we don't want to go spreading Mm. disease around. Uh, Bring enough for each family member, everybody who's headed with you to the shelter. Also, they advise bring water, at least a gallon of water per person per day. Nobody knows how long they're going to take shelter, right? But but bring enough water uh, to keep everybody comfortable. Bring one week supply of non-perishable food that does not require cooking. Now, what are some of those? What what could you bring, Megan, uh, Sam? Uh, uh, non-perishable foods that uh, maybe uh, uh, I would say comfort food. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I, uh, uh, I brought Doritos. I brought Doritos today. <laughs> Doritos. Nice. Yeah, I got Cheez Its here. Cliff New- bars. Yeah. bars. Cl- any kind of uh, any kind mm. of a, mm. a, 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 a packaged uh, a bar that you don't have to cook. Stick those in your bag. Um, peanut butter, uh, dried fruit, canned tuna fish. Uh, comfort food, non-electric <laughs> can openers. They advise also to bring non-electric can openers, uh, medications. Don't forget your medicine if you need it, because uh, there's a, a high likelihood that you won't be able to return home. And pack extra. Pack yeah. extra. If don't, you have don't extra. assume that this is just you know Friday. We're Thursday, Friday. Like once the storm leaves, mm. that's it. I'm going back. Like because you might not be able to. Right. Don't assume anything. Take it. If you have yeah. uh, a copy of your prescriptions, uh, tuck that in your bag that you're packing to take with you. Uh, if you have rain gear, they suggest you bring that. A flashlight or lantern, battery operated or hand crank radio. Now, this might sound like a lot of stuff to collect at the last minute, but it should all be in your hurricane kit. Uh, a lot of us have prepared. Uh, we've had many days to get ready for this. So uh, it includes also extra batteries. First aid supplies uh, to include over-the-counter pain reliever, you know, uh, 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 Emotrin, anti-diarrhea medicine, uh, laxatives if you need those, antihistamines, anti-itch cream, antiseptic. Bring insect repellent. Uh, Ooh, that's important. Yeah. Uh, extra batteries for any kind of medical devices that might require special batteries like hearing aids. 
Uh, don't forget your eyeglasses, extra contact lenses, extra bottled oxygen if you're on oxygen, a small generator for electric uh, dependent equipment like an oxygen concentrator, a nebulizer, cash. Can't reiterate Cash is this. King. Yeah. Yep. You know, if you've ever been in a storm zone afterwards, uh, sometimes the power doesn't ca- come back on uh, for a very long time. Sometimes uh, our signals get disconnected and you're unable to access cash or use a credit card. And a lot of people forget this in this digital age where we pay for everything with Apple Cash or, or Venmo on our cell phones. Mm-hmm. Uh, those signals could very likely go out, uh, leaving you stranded if you don't have cold, hard cash to hand somebody. So stick that extra cash in your wallet or your purse. Emergency access permits for beaches. Bring those with you. Books, cards, or board games to keep yeah. yourself occupied. And your These kids. are things people and mm. your kids. Uh, uh, you know, we have the, coloring books out right now. Yeah. Crayons, all all the coloring things, nice. Legos, um, puzzles. If you're out there listening to this, by the way, and you can tell us how to keep kids uh, uh, sort of. Uh, from 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 being traumatized in the storm, we would love to get your call or your email. 